back. We're going to start with Natasha. Natasha's a great friend, wonderful poet, uh, wonderful professor at Westminster, and just so happy to have her here tonight. She's got a new book out uh, that is called Vivarium, which if you didn't buy it before, buy it after. She's got copies of that. And you have Bend over there? Is that what, what do you have? And so she's got them all. So uh, Natasha's first book of poems, which is over there, Red Under Skin, uh, was chosen from over 900 manuscripts to win the Agnes Lynch Sterrett Prize. Her second collection of poems, Ben, was published by Tupelo Press in 2004 and won the Utah Book Award in Poetry. <coughs> Her third book, Bavarium, has just come out from Tupelo, uh, and we're excited about this. She also has a critical book about poetry called Windows and Doors, and that's coming out soon? October. In October. So Windows and Doors, a poet reads literary theory, uh, so coming out in October. Um, I'm not going to say much more. I want to hear the poets. Please bring on Natasha Saye. Thank you all for coming. You're my peeps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I think of city art. Um, I'm so happy to have this community. So this is an A B C D A R I U M. The poems are in alphabetical order, but I'm not going to read them in alphabetical order. Uh, I'm just going to read them in a way that I thought made sense for tonight. So this, the loudness is okay. You can hear me in the back. Yeah. Okay, I have a bit of a cold. So this first poem is called Against Chronology, and it's, it's a little tricky. I, I made a list of all the prepositions that exist in English, and then I thought of proper nouns, and it's an argument against the fact that we think that chronology explains things. So. I'll just, I'll just start reading it, and you'll, you'll hear the pattern. Without Agnos Dei, within air conditioning, via antigens, unlike Beethoven, until carbon dating, under a dynamo, toward the Eocene epoch, to the Flintstones, till the flood, <coughs> through Freud, since the Gravitron, regarding gunpowder, Per Gutenberg, past homophobia, outside internal combustion, on top of the Ku Klux Klan, onto the court of Louis XIV, on Medicare, off the middle class, near the new age, minus the old masters, like Marco Polo, into Qatar, instead of Roundup, in front of the sick silkworm from the Song of Songs for the Spanish Armada, except sulfides, during the Titanium Age, down with the Union Jack, by the Vikings, between Da Vinci and the Young Pretender, below the Well of Loneliness, behind Westinghouse, atop womankind, at Woolworths, around the wreck of the Deutschland, among xenophobes, along the Y chromosome, after Yankee Doodle, above the zeitgeist, aboard the zephyr of time. Next poem I'll read is uh, Sestina. And the title is Sluice Pool Turn, and it's an anagram for pollution curse. So I figured if people have the poem in front of them, somehow subliminally, <laughs> pollution curse, well, kind of the letters will make sense, and once you hear the poem, you'll, you'll understand. But, you know, it was such a bald title, and I just didn't want, I thought, anyway, so that's, I love anagrams, Sluice Pool Turn. And the fun in writing this poem was in making um, synonym and homonym substitutions for the N words. What kind of wings would let us soar through glue 
Too bad we're stuck on Earth, discovering cells soaked in nitrogen, in rains runoff burning from the copper mines, or oil burning seabirds' beaks and wings. We don't demand companies rein in messes even as they screw us over with what they sell. Toxins everywhere. Who on Earth knew? Pliny did that unearthed asbestos, plus what we burn, flush, and dump, not to mention cell phones, would shadow us, wings of a bird of prey. We're the mice, glued and trapped by our precipitates. So much for drinking rain or growing carrots in soil full of lead. The nasty stew makes quite a meal. It burns our nostrils and our eyes, swings the scales of health for sale natural killer T cells that fight, or not, against the reign of mercury, the one with wings, in air, in water, and on earth. Heads ache before they roll, burnished by an intravenous goo, administered by cheerful crews to curb abnormal growth of cells, along with radiation burns, surgery, and pills. Healing pain, we hope, living on a ruined earth we walk to cure. Winged horses burned into glue, and the earth sold short in our reign with neither wing nor prayer. On a similarly grumpy note, <laughs> this one's called USA Today. When the tire shop confuses less with fewer, you're reminded that these days, the New York Times uses also as a conjunction and of a gift in your mailbox to Lori from Jeff without a return address, indicating a deeper problem, Freud would say. Jeff really didn't want to give Lori anything. While the social psychologists note that a culture makes its own rules, and people who abide by them are happier, even if the rules are terminal sloppiness and stupidity. You'd like to live in a kingdom of fact checkers whose phlebotomists never mislabel vials. Perhaps if people had less, said less, and did less, they'd be more exacting. You're looking at cabinet doors that don't meet, sitting on a couch with crooked seams, it's only a matter of time before a doctor injects you with methotrexate instead of methosalamide, or your co-pilot remarks to the pilot that the runway seems awfully dark. <laughs> this one's called Dear Fisher Cat, uh, Martis Pinante, and um, so it's it's an animal, and they don't have them here, they have them in the Northeast, and it's an animal, it's part of the weasel family, uh, and um, it's only found in the U.S., this particular variety of the weasel cat. Never seen you in the flesh. I've seen a cousin, Martis Martis, stuffed in a shop window in Bavaria where they chew wiring in cars. And Martis Zibelina turned into a coat, thicker than mink, the price of a house. I tried it on with awe. I watched Martis Fiona on YouTube, the woman holding the camera cooing while the small, shy animal nosed around her terrace in the English countryside. Your name in Croatian, Kuna, is currency. Seven million years old, much older than Homo and certainly Sapiens. Trapped to the brink of extinction, you came back. You are to the others as the javelina is to the wild boar, a new world clade. Neither fisher nor cat. Some people love bears or whales or whooping cranes. I love you your sweet round ears and button nose, your fur heavy as the robe of a queen, your claws unsheathed in paws the size of a child's hand. You could be a toy, a cartoon, a pet, 
if it weren't for your carnivorous drive, your solitary soul. Your jaw, jaws can kill a porcupine, attacking snout first from below, eating it inside out. You cross the narrowest gap in the forest opening. You sleep in the crook of a beach in old growth canopy. I'll see you someday, close range. I'll be the rabbit curled in the parsley garden. And you, you'll be there unnoticed until too late to swallow all the sounds my gullet makes. So this poem is an answer, it's called Alibi, and it's an answer to the question I often got when I was in Slovenia. People said, what did you do on your Fulbright? So here's the answer. I was treading on yellow primroses in their limestone beds. I was eating langoustine and saffron fettuccine with my fingers. I was learning not to smile at strangers. I was jaywalking. I was hanging out the window waiting for lightning to strike. I was having tooth number 12 drilled to death. I was up to my elbows in buckwheat. I was charmed. I was pumicing my heels. I was apologizing for my government. I was lost in reverie. I was listening to the sunset. I was mispronouncing the names of my cousins. I was shown the old slaughterhouse by some cats. I was practicing being blind, cobblestones under my soles. I was buying poisons whose labels I couldn't read. I was massaging my thumbs. I was drinking liqueur made from the dead poet's family recipe. I was using the clock tower of St. Joseph's to tell time. I was allowing boiled dough to rise in my stomach. I was making a list of famous syphilitics. I was comparing egg yolks to pumpkins. I was thinking about Flaubert putting in commas then taking them out. I was planning the next time I could travel here and wrap solitude around me like cashmere. I'm going to read a couple sort of traditional uh, A.B. Sudarian poems, and they start with a letter of the alphabet, and then the beginning of each line um, begins with the successive letter of the alphabet. But the twist on one of these is that the end is the same letter, but not this first one that I'll read. Now this one's, upon learning that kangaroos and emus can't move backward. Kangaroos in Australia are like deer in the United States. Mobs of them hop around day and night until they die of starvation or are turned into soccer shoes. Save your pity and take my instant quiz. When was the last time you walked backward? Realize that this amusing skill may be more vital than you think. When confronted by a vicious dog, possibly useful. When looking at a Velasquez, conceivably connoisseurship. If we all step back more, perhaps we'd stop crossing out species. Bye bye dodo, adios carrier pigeon. You weren't necessary to the capitalist zoo anyway. I know I'm getting away from the idea that too much of any one thing is bad, whether it's kangaroos or coyotes or us. Of course, I'm not willing to be the one to die, at least not right now. I shall, however, exhort, no glove, no love, and get surplus food to those who need it. These would be giant steps for humankind, harder than moon travel, but easier than bringing back the Irish elk. Sometimes progress looks like a joke, a huge bird with tiny wings not meant for flight. I'll skip the next one so we stay on time. Let's see. I'll read three more poems. This one's called Happy and Sad. Happy and sad come different ways through the brain. In one, a feather is lofted on warm currents. In the other, lead talons drag you around a volcano's rim. 
One's a beach resort <coughs> with sparkling pools and attentive staff. The other's a town in the interior, poured scratching dirt with rakes. That one's a deck of marked cards. The other's a blank book of creamy pages. Back and forth between windows, fort, da. The fear of losing or the freedom of knowing, love remains. Two spigots, one Chateau de Chem, the other piss. The brain of our tender, trying to regulate alternating or sometimes even simultaneous spurts. You never know what will fill your mouth. And um, the science behind that poem is actually correct. The happiness and sadness areas in the brain are two different places. They have found out through you know, neurological imaging, which is why we have these bittersweet feelings and which is why we need poetry to explain them. So it's entirely possible to feel happy and sad at the same time. So I'll read two more poems. This one's called Ode to eBay. <clears throat> oh world, click click. A Kerman rug, circa 75, cherry, teal, olive, cream, cigarette burns. A Sturgis, metal that looks old, vanity light, 995. The very shoes, brand new, Joseph Seibel, size 39. Electra model that I walk in. At my fingers, 24 hours, a thousand auctions ending as I write this, and one of them might be for something that I need or truly want and can afford. Romance of the sea for 12, oyster forks, tomato servers, and cream soup spoons. I thought for days about the menu to make use of every implement, but finally let them go. There'll be more, I said, and sure enough today there were. All losses are restored and sorrows end. I've studied original oil paintings, 12,371 listings, Scottish fold kittens, two, and sandpaper, 71, and was pleased not to see my new purse, Cleo and Patek. Oh, fellow buyers in our codes, seeing what we bought and what we paid. Welcome, ABC poet, eBay whispers when I boot up, just for you. Rugs to layer, three feet thick, Jackie Kennedy's diamond, or a vintage mohair steife dachshund, baldy, like the one I gave away. Ready to pick things up where you left off? Now I see. Schlepping was the problem in the past. It's shopping pure, I love. More edifying than TV. I know what things are worth. eBay knows I know and watches me. For whom does FedEx roll? It rolls for me. <laughs> in the interim, I've been allotted, I wallow in a ghastly gift, a click against the clock. Is that what it's about? Or substitution, plain and simple, stuff for what I lack. A ghastly gift is what Betty Friedan called shopping in the feminine mystique. And the last poem I'll read is an alphabet poem. It's a narrative and it's um, E. And my method with a lot of the poems in this book was to open the dictionary uh, at random to a um, letter and then make lists of words I didn't know or ones that I thought the etymology was particularly interesting. And then kind of like connecting the dots, I would let the poem form from the what unconscious connections between the words that started with that particular letter. So it was very much a, a randomly generated um, thing. So E, essay to try from exagiare to weigh out, examine. I was 11 and watching the galloping gourmet with this 
British Australian accent and his glass of wine, learning how to get juice out of a lemon by rolling it hard on the counter, when the doorbell rang, my hair around cans to make it straight, the man next door, his receding hair combed back, Armenia, the weasel whose fur turns from brown to white in winter. Asked if anyone else were home. I said no. A dentate, lacking teeth. Asked if he could come in. Electric, from the Greek, electron, amber, because it produces sparks when rubbed. I said no, I'm sorry. Euphemism, to speak with good words. We stood eye to eye. Eutrophic, a body of water with no so much mineral and organic matter, the oxygen is reduced. Until I slowly shut the door in his face. Eve, from Hebrew, living, pushing with both hands. Thank you.